Imagine a colossal eruption that darkens the skies and changes life on Earth as we know it. Picture the serene landscape of Yellowstone National Park suddenly transformed into a scene of apocalyptic devastation. The skies are filled with ash, the sun is obscured, and the very air becomes a toxic mix of gases. This is not the plot of a science fiction movie, but a very real possibility, the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Located in the western United States, spanning across parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, Yellowstone National Park is a natural wonder, attracting millions of visitors each year with its stunning geysers, hot springs, and diverse wildlife. Beneath this picturesque landscape, however, lies a sleeping giant, the Yellowstone supervolcano. Unlike typical volcanoes, a supervolcano is capable of producing an eruption thousands of times more powerful than a standard volcanic eruption. The Yellowstone caldera, which is the volcanic crater, measures approximately 30 miles wide, a testament to its potential for cataclysmic activity. The significance of the Yellowstone supervolcano cannot be overstated. It has erupted three times in the last 2.1 million years, with the last major eruption occurring approximately 640,000 years ago. Each of these eruptions released vast amounts of volcanic material and left a lasting impact on the planet's climate and ecosystem. Today, the caldera continues to be monitored closely by scientists due to its potential to unleash devastation on a global scale. The aim of this video is to delve into the potential impacts and consequences of an eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. While the thought of such an event can be terrifying, understanding the science behind it and the possible outcomes can help us prepare for and mitigate its effects. We will explore the immediate and long-term consequences of an eruption ranging from local destruction to global climatic changes. By examining the geological evidence, scientific predictions, and historical precedents, we hope to provide a comprehensive view of what might happen if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt today. Through this journey, we will uncover how an eruption could alter the landscape of North America, disrupt global weather patterns, and impact human civilization. The video will also highlight the ongoing efforts of scientists to monitor and study the supervolcano, aiming to predict its activity and develop strategies to minimize the potential damage. This exploration is not only a fascinating scientific endeavor, but also a crucial step in preparing for a natural disaster that could reshape our world. So, join us as we embark on this journey to understand one of the most powerful natural forces on our planet. By the end of this video, you will have a deeper appreciation for the Yellowstone supervolcano and the profound impact it could have on our lives and the Earth itself. The Yellowstone caldera is a geological marvel, representing one of the most powerful and complex natural phenomena on Earth. The caldera itself, a massive volcanic crater, spans approximately 30 miles across, making it a defining feature of Yellowstone National Park. This immense structure was formed through a series of cataclysmic volcanic events, which are the result of a unique geological setup. Yellowstone sits atop a hotspot, a plume of hot material rising from deep within the Earth's mantle. Unlike typical volcanoes that form at tectonic plate boundaries, hotspots can occur within the interior of tectonic plates. As the North American plate moves over the stationary hotspot, the intense heat and pressure cause the Earth's crust to melt, creating magma chambers beneath the surface. Over time, the pressure within these magma chambers builds until it is released in the form of a volcanic eruption. What sets Yellowstone apart as a supervolcano is the sheer scale of its eruptions. A supervolcano is defined as one capable of producing an eruption with a volcanic explosivity index. VEI of 8, the highest level on the scale. Such eruptions eject more than 1,000 cubic kilometers, 240 cubic miles, of material, 
vastly exceeding the output of typical volcanic eruptions. This immense power is why the Yellowstone supervolcano is a subject of intense study and monitoring. The Yellowstone supervolcano has experienced three major eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, each of which left a profound mark on the landscape and environment. The first eruption, known as the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, occurred approximately 2.1 million years ago and ejected about 2,500 cubic kilometers, 600 cubic miles, of volcanic material. This event created the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, a thick layer of volcanic rock that can still be seen today. The second major eruption, the Mesa Falls eruption, took place around 1.3 million years ago. Although smaller than the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, it still released an impressive 280 cubic kilometers, 67 cubic miles, of material forming the Henry's Fork caldera. The most recent and perhaps most famous eruption, the Lava Creek eruption, occurred approximately 640,000 years ago. This eruption released around 1,000 cubic kilometers, 240 cubic miles, of material leading to the formation of the present-day Yellowstone caldera. The Lava Creek Tuff, a widespread deposit of volcanic ash and rock from this eruption, covers a vast area and provides key evidence of the event's magnitude. To put these eruptions into perspective, let's compare them to other well-known volcanic events. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington State, for instance, had a VEI of 5 and released about 1 cubic kilometer, 0.24 cubic miles of material. The eruption of Krakatoa in 1883, one of the most devastating volcanic events in recorded history, had a VEI of 6 and ejected approximately 25 cubic kilometers, 6 cubic miles of material. Even the infamous eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, which buried the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, pales in comparison to Yellowstone's super-eruptions. The impact of these historical eruptions was far-reaching. The massive volume of ash and volcanic gases ejected into the atmosphere would have led to significant climatic changes, including a drop in global temperatures known as a volcanic winter. Such events can disrupt weather patterns, affect agricultural productivity, and lead to widespread ecological consequences. Understanding the geological background and historical eruptions of the Yellowstone supervolcano is crucial for grasping the potential threat it poses. Each eruption has reshaped the landscape, altered the climate, and left a lasting imprint on the Earth's geological record. As we continue to study this supervolcano, we gain valuable insights into the forces that drive such powerful eruptions and the potential consequences of a future event. Understanding the mechanics of a supervolcanic eruption involves examining the various geological processes and signs that lead up to such a cataclysmic event. At the heart of an eruption lies the movement and pressure of magma beneath the Earth's crust. For the Yellowstone supervolcano, this process begins deep within the mantle, where the hotspot generates intense heat, causing the surrounding rock to melt and form magma. As magma accumulates in the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, several key factors contribute to the potential for an eruption. One of the primary triggers is the buildup of pressure. Over time, the magma chamber becomes increasingly pressurized as more magma is generated and the gases within the magma expand. This pressure seeks an outlet and when it becomes too great, it can fracture the overlying rock creating pathways for the magma to move toward the surface. Tectonic activity also plays a crucial role in the eruption process. The movement of the North American plate over the stationary hotspot can cause stress and strain within the Earth's crust. These tectonic forces can lead to the formation of faults and fractures, which provide additional conduits for magma to ascend. The combination of rising magma and tectonic stress can destabilize the crust, making an eruption more likely. Volcanologists monitor a variety of signs that indicate an impending eruption. 
One of the most significant indicators is seismic activity. Earthquakes, or tremors, are often a precursor to volcanic eruptions as the movement of magma generates stress within the crust, causing it to fracture and release seismic energy. At Yellowstone, scientists use an extensive network of seismometers to detect and analyze these tremors, looking for patterns that suggest rising magma. Another important sign is ground deformation. As magma accumulates in the chamber, it can cause the ground above to bulge and deform. This deformation can be measured using techniques such as GPS and INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, which track changes in the Earth's surface with high precision. Significant uplift or subsidence of the ground can indicate that magma is moving and that pressure is building within the chamber. Changes in geothermal activity are also closely monitored. Yellowstone is known for its geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, which are direct manifestations of the underlying geothermal system. Variations in the temperature, chemistry, and behavior of these features can provide clues about changes in the magma chamber. For example, an increase in the temperature of hot springs or the appearance of new fumaroles could signal that magma is moving closer to the surface. An eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would likely unfold in several distinct stages, each characterized by specific processes and events. Understanding these stages helps scientists predict the progression of an eruption and its potential impacts. The earliest stage of an eruption is marked by increasing seismic activity. Small earthquakes and tremors occur as magma begins to rise and exert pressure on the overlying rock. These tremors are typically low in magnitude, but can be numerous, indicating that magma is moving and fracturing the crust. This stage may last for weeks, months, or even years, depending on the dynamics of the magma chamber. As magma continues to rise, it causes significant ground deformation. The land above the magma chamber begins to bulge and uplift, sometimes by several meters. Concurrently, Volcanic gases such as sulfur dioxide, SO and carbon dioxide, CO are released from the magma and escape through fractures and vents in the ground. These gases can be detected and measured using various instruments, providing further evidence of magma movement. As pressure within the magma chamber builds, seismic activity intensifies. Larger and more frequent earthquakes occur indicating that the magma is approaching a critical point. During this stage, scientists may observe harmonic tremor, a continuous rhythmic ground vibration caused by the movement of magma. This signal is often a precursor to an imminent eruption. The initial eruption phase begins when the pressure within the magma chamber becomes too great for the overlying rock to contain. Magma breaches the surface resulting in a series of explosive eruptions. These initial blasts release large amounts of ash, pumice, and volcanic gases into the atmosphere. The force of the eruption can be powerful enough to obliterate the surrounding landscape, creating a caldera, and sending pyroclastic flows fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic material down the slopes. The main explosive phase is characterized by sustained and intense eruptions. Massive columns of ash and gas are ejected high into the atmosphere, reaching altitudes of up to 30 kilometers, 19 miles or more. The ash cloud can spread across vast areas, darkening the skies and causing widespread disruption. The fallout from this ash can cover large regions, burying landscapes under thick layers of volcanic material. Pyroclastic flows continue to surge from the volcano devastating everything in their path. After the main explosive phase, the eruption may continue with smaller, less intense eruptions. These secondary eruptions can still be highly destructive, but are typically shorter in duration and more localized. The aftermath of the eruption includes the cooling and solidification of lava flows, the formation of volcanic domes, and the creation of new geothermal features as the landscape adjusts to the changes. 
The long-term effects of a supervolcanic eruption extend beyond the immediate vicinity of the eruption site. The injection of ash and sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere can lead to a volcanic winter, causing global temperatures to drop and disrupting weather patterns. This climatic impact can last for several years, affecting agriculture, ecosystems and human societies worldwide. Additionally, the ash fallout can contaminate water supplies, damage infrastructure and pose serious health risks to people and animals. By understanding the mechanics and stages of a supervolcanic eruption, we can better appreciate the complexity and scale of these natural events. In the next section, we will explore the potential impacts of a Yellowstone eruption on the environment, climate and human civilization. Through this exploration, we aim to highlight the importance of monitoring and preparedness in mitigating the devastating consequences of such an eruption. The immediate destruction within the vicinity of Yellowstone following a supervolcanic eruption would be catastrophic. The initial blast would unleash a tremendous force, obliterating everything within a radius of several kilometers. This explosive power, driven by the rapid expansion of volcanic gases, would result in a massive release of pyroclastic flows, lava and ash fallout. Pyroclastic flows, composed of hot gases, ash and volcanic rock fragments, would surge down the slopes of the caldera at speeds exceeding 100 km per hour, 62 miles per hour. These flows are incredibly destructive, incinerating and burying anything in their path. Entire forests would be flattened and any human settlements within this zone would be completely destroyed. The intense heat and speed of these flows make them one of the deadliest aspects of a volcanic eruption. Lava flows, while slower than pyroclastic flows, would also contribute to the widespread devastation. The molten rock would ooze out of fissures and vents, covering the landscape and burning everything in its path. The sheer volume of lava could create vast fields of solidified volcanic rock, altering the topography of Yellowstone National Park for centuries. Ash fallout would be another immediate consequence of the eruption. Volcanic ash, composed of tiny shards of glass-like rock and minerals, would be ejected high into the atmosphere and begin to settle back down to the ground. The area surrounding Yellowstone would be covered in a thick layer of ash, potentially several meters deep. This ash is not only destructive, but also poses severe health risks due to its abrasive and fine nature. The human impact of such an eruption would be profound and devastating. The immediate vicinity of the eruption would see a significant loss of life as those caught in the path of pyroclastic flows and lava would have little chance of survival. The intense heat and toxic gases released during the eruption would pose immediate health risks, causing severe burns and respiratory issues. Evacuation plans and emergency responses would be crucial in mitigating the human toll. However, the speed and unpredictability of a supervolcanic eruption would make evacuation challenging. Ideally, early warning systems and continuous monitoring would provide enough time for residents to evacuate. Emergency services would need to be mobilized rapidly to facilitate the evacuation and provide medical assistance. Displacement would be another major issue, as thousands of people would be forced to leave their homes and seek refuge elsewhere. The ash fallout would contaminate water supplies, destroy crops, and render vast areas uninhabitable. Temporary shelters and relief efforts would be necessary to support the displaced population, adding strain to local and national resources. The immediate health risks extend beyond those in the direct path of the eruption. Volcanic ash can cause serious respiratory problems, especially for individuals with pre-existing conditions. The fine particles can penetrate deep into the lungs, leading to conditions such as silicosis. Additionally, the ash can irritate the eyes and skin, causing further health complications. The ash cloud produced by the Yellowstone eruption would have far-reaching effects, extending well beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. 
As the ash is ejected into the atmosphere, it would be carried by wind currents across the United States and potentially around the globe. The distribution of ash would depend on the prevailing wind patterns at the time of the eruption. In the short term, this ash cloud would have a significant impact on air travel and transportation. Volcanic ash is highly abrasive and can damage aircraft engines, leading to the grounding of flights across affected regions. Airports would need to close and air traffic would be severely disrupted, stranding passengers and affecting global travel networks. The ash would also settle on roads and infrastructure, making transportation hazardous and impeding emergency response efforts. One of the most significant short-term environmental impacts of a supervolcanic eruption is the phenomenon known as a volcanic winter. The massive amounts of ash and sulfur dioxide, SO released into the atmosphere, would form aerosols that reflect sunlight away from the Earth, leading to a drop in global temperatures. This cooling effect can last for several years, depending on the scale of the eruption and the amount of material injected into the stratosphere. The volcanic winter would lead to drastic changes in global weather patterns. Regions that typically experience warm and temperate climates might see much cooler temperatures, while areas prone to cold weather could face even harsher conditions. This sudden shift in climate would have far-reaching consequences for agriculture, ecosystems and human societies. The drop in temperatures would shorten growing seasons and reduce agricultural yields, leading to food shortages and higher prices. Crops that are sensitive to temperature changes, such as wheat and corn, would be particularly affected. This agricultural disruption would have a ripple effect through the global food supply chain, impacting food security and potentially leading to famine in vulnerable regions. The climatic changes would also affect ecosystems and wildlife. Species that are adapted to specific climate conditions might struggle to survive in the altered environment. This could lead to shifts in biodiversity, with some species becoming more dominant while others face extinction. The disruption of natural habitats would have long-term implications for conservation efforts and the stability of ecosystems. The long-term global consequences of a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would be profound, particularly in the realms of agriculture and food supply. The initial ash fallout would blanket vast tracts of arable land, rendering it temporarily infertile. Volcanic ash, while containing nutrients that can be beneficial to soil in the long term, initially creates a hostile environment for plant growth. The fine abrasive particles can damage the delicate tissues of crops, reduce photosynthesis by blocking sunlight and lead to the death of many plants. Moreover, the volcanic winter induced by the eruption would drastically alter global climate patterns. Lower temperatures and reduced sunlight would shorten growing seasons, leading to diminished agricultural productivity. Crops that rely on specific temperature ranges and sunlight conditions, such as wheat, maize and rice, would suffer greatly. This reduction in crop yields would not only affect the immediate regions around Yellowstone, but also have cascading effects on the global food supply. The resulting food shortages could lead to economic turmoil as prices for staple foods skyrocket. Developing countries, which are often more dependent on agriculture and less capable of absorbing such shocks, would face severe food security issues. In more developed nations, the economic impact would be felt through increased food prices, inflation, and potential disruptions to food supply chains. Governments would need to implement emergency measures to distribute food and prevent widespread hunger, further straining resources. The long-term health problems caused by ash inhalation and environmental changes would be another major concern. Volcanic ash consists of tiny, sharp particles that can penetrate deep into the lungs, causing respiratory issues such as bronchitis, silicosis, and aggravation of pre-existing conditions like asthma. These health issues would be exacerbated by the prolonged exposure to ash-laden air 
in the aftermath of the eruption. Additionally, the drop in temperatures and altered weather patterns could lead to an increase in respiratory illnesses such as influenza and pneumonia. The colder, harsher climate could also affect mental health with increased rates of depression and anxiety as people cope with the drastic changes to their environment and way of life. Water sources could become contaminated with ash, leading to gastrointestinal diseases and other health issues. The disruption of infrastructure and healthcare services would make it difficult for affected populations to receive the necessary medical attention, compounding the health crisis. The economic cost of recovery and rebuilding after such a catastrophic event would be staggering. The immediate damage to infrastructure, homes and businesses would require extensive and expensive reconstruction efforts. The agricultural sector, as previously discussed, would face prolonged disruptions, leading to economic losses that would ripple through related industries. Insurance claims would skyrocket, potentially overwhelming the financial capacity of insurance companies and leading to broader economic instability. Governments would need to allocate significant resources to disaster relief and rebuilding, diverting funds from other critical areas, such as education and healthcare. Socially, the displacement of large populations would create a refugee crisis, with millions of people needing to find new homes and livelihoods. This mass migration could lead to overcrowding in urban areas, strain public services, and increase tensions between different communities. The psychological impact on displaced individuals, coupled with the loss of homes, jobs and loved ones, could lead to long-term mental health issues. Political upheavals are also a possible consequence. Governments might face increased pressure and criticism over their handling of the disaster, leading to instability and changes in leadership. In extreme cases, competition for resources and the need to address widespread social unrest could lead to conflicts both within and between nations. Current monitoring efforts by the US Geological Survey, USGS and other agencies are crucial in predicting and mitigating the effects of a potential Yellowstone eruption. The USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO employs a network of seismometers, GPS stations and satellite data to continuously monitor the region for signs of volcanic activity. These instruments detect seismic activity, ground deformation, and changes in geothermal features, providing valuable data that helps scientists understand the behavior of the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone. By analyzing patterns in this data, volcanologists can identify precursors to an eruption, such as increased seismic activity, significant ground uplift, and changes in the composition of volcanic gases. These indicators allow for the development of predictive models that estimate the likelihood and potential timing of an eruption. While predicting the exact timing of a supervolcanic eruption remains challenging, continuous monitoring improves our ability to anticipate and respond to such events. Disaster preparedness plans are essential for minimizing the impact of a Yellowstone eruption. Current plans involve coordinated efforts between federal, state, and local agencies to ensure efficient evacuation, emergency response, and resource distribution. Public awareness campaigns are conducted to educate residents about the risks and necessary precautions. Evacuation routes and shelters are pre-identified to facilitate the safe relocation of people from high-risk areas. Emergency services are trained to respond quickly to volcanic hazards, including ashfall, pyroclastic flows, and lava flows. The National Guard and other military units are prepared to assist with evacuation and provide logistical support. However, more can be done to enhance preparedness. Increased investment in monitoring technology and infrastructure would improve early warning systems and predictive models. Regular drills and simulations can ensure that both authorities and the public are well prepared for a real event. Building more resilient infrastructure, 
such as ash-resistant roofing and air filtration systems, would mitigate the impact of ashfall on homes and public buildings. Individuals can also take steps to prepare for a potential eruption. Keeping an emergency kit with essentials such as food, water, medications, and protective masks is crucial. Having a family emergency plan that includes communication strategies and evacuation routes can ensure that everyone knows what to do in the event of an eruption. Staying informed through reliable sources and heeding evacuation orders promptly can make a significant difference in personal safety. In our exploration of the Yellowstone supervolcano, we've delved into the geological background and historical context of this formidable natural wonder. We learned that the Yellowstone caldera, formed by past super eruptions, is a testament to the immense power lying beneath the serene landscapes of Yellowstone National Park. The potential for a future eruption, driven by magma pressure and tectonic activity, necessitates continuous monitoring and preparedness. We examine the mechanics of an eruption, from the initial tremors signaling magma movement to the catastrophic main explosive event. Understanding these stages helps us appreciate the complexity and scale of supervolcanic eruptions. We also discuss the immediate effects of such an eruption, including local devastation, pyroclastic flows, lava and ash fallout, as well as the significant human impact involving loss of life, displacement and health risks. The short-term environmental impacts would be profound, with an ash cloud affecting air travel and transportation, and the phenomenon of a volcanic winter altering global temperatures and weather patterns. These changes would have dire consequences for agriculture, leading to food shortages and economic instability. The long-term global consequences extend to health issues caused by ash inhalation, economic costs of recovery, and potential social and political upheavals. The importance of being prepared for a Yellowstone eruption cannot be overstated. The ongoing scientific efforts to monitor the supervolcano are crucial in providing early warnings and enabling effective disaster response. Organizations like the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, and the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO play vital roles in gathering and analyzing data to predict volcanic activity. Their work helps mitigate the risks and protect lives by informing evacuation plans and emergency responses. Preparedness goes beyond scientific monitoring. It involves coordinated efforts at all levels of government and society to ensure that comprehensive disaster preparedness plans are in place. Public awareness and education campaigns are essential to equip individuals with the knowledge and tools needed to respond effectively in the event of an eruption. Investing in resilient infrastructure and conducting regular drills can enhance our readiness to face such a natural disaster.